Connor Jones intentionally wrecks Matt Mills and sends him to the hospital. Chandler Smith could be without a ride in 2025, according to him. And let's talk about what happened on Saturday at Homestead. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Before we get into the actual news, we need to talk about the NBC Sports app and how absolutely dreadful it is. So when NASCAR has their practice and qualifying and it's exclusively on the NBC Sports app because NBC doesn't have anywhere else to put it on any of their channels, there's a collective groan that comes out from NASCAR fans because the app is terrible. So every time I open up my Apple TV, I scroll down, I find the NBC Sports app, I click on it, I click on to watch the practice and qualifying session that I want to watch. And it says, you're not authorized, you need to relink your subscription, your TV subscription. I'm like, okay, fine, go into the settings, unlink my YouTube TV, relink my YouTube TV, and then have to go back in, click on it, and then it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you got to completely close out the entire app and then go in, unlink, relink, and then hopefully it works from there. Even Denny Hamlin was upset about it on Saturday, just as much as I was when he responded to uh, the tweet that I had about it, because it is absolutely infuriating. You shouldn't have to go in and relink and uh, unlink and relink and unlink and do all the things. I just used it on Friday to watch Xfinity practice and qualifying. And then 16 hours later, I try to use it for the NASCAR Cup Series practice and qualifying on Saturday morning. It says, you're not authorized to use it. I'm like, I am authorized to use it. What's the difference between me unlinking it and relinking it? And now all of a sudden I'm authorized to use it. But the good news is we're not going to have to worry about it. Only two more races that we're going to have to deal with the NBC Sports app. Because next year, the first half of the season, all practice and qualifying outside of the Daytona 500 and the All-Star Race will be on Amazon Prime. The second half of the season, all practice and qualifying will be on True TV and Max, which means that we don't have to deal with NBC and their antiquated app infrastructure. Now, into today's actual news, though. Starting off with Connor Jones and him intentionally wrecking Matt Mills during the NASCAR Truck Series race Saturday at Homestead. If you missed it, the 66 truck of Connor Jones driving for Thor Sport sailed it off into turns three and four, ran through the 42 truck of Matt Mills like he was Austin Dillon at Richmond, sent the 42 truck up into the wall. Well, got him sideways. He overcorrected, hits the wall, comes down on fire, gets out of the truck, clearly is a little bit shaken up from it. Connor Jones then goes on this absolute tirade over the radio like he's a dude driving a 1500 sitting in traffic and just raging at everybody. If you got offended by that, you might be one of those guys, but everybody knows who I'm talking about. They always floor it and then they're like, this truck gets terrible gas mileage. It's like, well, because you're an angry person and you're flooring it, driving your gas mileage down by also screaming at people on the road for driving how they should. It doesn't matter. Connor Jones goes on his tirade. And NASCAR was like, hey, listen, buddy, you can scream on the radio all you want, but you're going to come down pit road here and serve a two lap penalty for aggressive driving. And realistically, I probably would have parked him if it was up to me. But NASCAR typically doesn't do stuff like that. Now, there could, of course, be some sort of fine that comes out uh, later in the week when the penalty report comes out on Tuesday. But after the race, Matt Mills is then transferred or transported rather to a local area hospital for further evaluation, end up staying the night in that hospital as well. Well, Connor Jones gets out of the truck after the race and is asked by media members if he wants to talk about what happened. He then turns to his Thor Sport crew member and goes, should I talk or do you think I'll say something stupid? Well, in that moment, you kind of said something stupid there. So take a listen to what he had to say. Should I? You think I'm going to say something stupid? Got it? Not right now. And then after all that is said and done, and he does, in fact, I, my opinion, say something stupid by saying something stupid. He then puts out a statement and he's like, I apologize for everything that happened, blah, 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 blah. And it even includes the fact that he and Matt Mills uh, have had multiple run ins on track, which, again, for just a PR standpoint, uh, these younger guys, if you need help with PR, just DM me. I'll help you write this PR statement because you don't need to include that. Just be like, I'm really sorry for what happened on track today. Emotions got the best of me. Should not ever happen. Blah, blah, blah. Don't, you know, and move on from that. Don't include the fact that you guys have had multiple run-ins to try to justify what you did. That's that's dumb. That's dumb, in my opinion. Don't do that. Well, then somebody took a statement and put it through an AI um, evaluator, and it said that it was high likelihood 100% AI generated, which those things are faulty at times, but that's just a bad look overall 
uh, to for Connor Jones. Maybe it's time for him to learn utilities, buddy, because he might just be better off working for his dad's utility company than being a race car driver at this point because he continually has outbursts like this. I mean, Roger Carruth on Twitter said this has been happening since legend cars. Like he's been doing this. He does the same thing when he runs late models, cars, tour, uh, Arca, anything that he gets in. He always has some sort of rage. Daniel Dye said earlier this year that he needs to stop watching Dale Senior clips and driving through people uh, on the racetrack because the kid just always has a run in. I get it. He's 18 years old. 18 year old uh, uh, guys, for the most part, typically make dumb decisions. They're irrational. They don't think things all the way through for the most of them. So, yeah, you can attribute it to that. But hey, if you want to race in a professional racing series, you got to act like a professional in a professional racing series. And he he just did not on Saturday and hasn't, you know, multiple times this season. So we'll see what NASCAR does, if anything, uh, further in the week. But I am happy that they at least parked him for two laps. Ultimately, I don't think that he's going to learn his lesson until like there's a drastic measure taken, that being a suspension more than likely. Um, but hey, we'll get to uh, wait and see what his 2025 NASCAR plans are. I could be working for my dad's construction company next year. That's what Chandler Smith said on Saturday after the NASCAR Xfinity Series race at Homestead when asked about his 2025 plans. As most of you guys know in the silly season uh, updates, his name hasn't really come up much and the only seat that his name was linked to was that third cup seat over at Front Row Motorsports and it seems like that has fizzled out now as well. So Chandler Smith doesn't currently have anything set in stone for 2025. Take a listen to what he said. Well, I don't have a ride next year, Bob. I could be working for my dad's construction business and I could be hanging it up at the end of this year. So with that being said, all craps will not be given in Martinsville. And we were really fast there in the spring. Just don't need a wreck in practice so I can make my life a little easier and I have to drive from the back, hopefully. Um, it's meant to be. It'll happen. If not, we still have an amazing season this year and super, super grateful for, for the opportunity that I had this year with, with everybody that I was able to work with at Joe Gibbs Racing. So, from what I understand, you're talking to a lot of people for next year, right? It's not really any seats left open. <clears throat> There's the only seats left open. You got to bring a big, big, big pocketbook with you, and I don't have a bunch of. I don't have a big pocketbook, so. And I think his plan for 2024, when he left Cog Racing, so if you remember back to 2023, he wanted out of his Cog deal, which is a multi-year deal, so they bought him out of that ride, his, his family did, his backers, whoever, so that he could move over to Joe Gibbs Racing, which I completely understand that move because that is a higher performing team. No offense to Cog Racing, but Joe Gibbs Racing is definitely the top tier of the Xfinity Series, and anybody would jump at that opportunity. I think what Chandler's idea here was is, to go over, take that bet on yourself in 2024 and hope that somebody hires you for 2025 where you don't have to bring budget with you because the path to cup over at Joe Gibbs Racing and the Toyota camp just really was never there for for Chandler Smith. The path to cup at Colleg definitely seemed to exist over there, but at Colleg, you know, you're probably going to contend at, you know, a, a handful of tracks every year. But at Joe Racing, you can contend at every track. So for Chandler, it is kind of like a bet on himself, even if the pathway to Cup didn't make sense. So now, heading into 2025, he doesn't have any options available. He doesn't have any budget, so all the good Xfinity Series seats are already taken up. And the only ones that kind of remain or could you know, possibly uh, be there are ones that are going to require budget. And he doesn't have that. So now he's like, hey, for 2025, I might just be working for my dad's construction company. Might have to hang it up, which would be a shame because in two full seasons in the Xfinity series so far, he has three wins. And I'll be honest, if he finds a way to Phoenix this year in that championship four, he's probably the favorite going in there because he was so strong there back in the spring when he won. He won at Richmond where he's super strong at. A flat short track is Chandler Smith's dream like that is the perfect setup for him especially if he finds a way to that championship race so for Chandler it would be a shame to see him exit the sport because I think the kid definitely does have talent does he rub people the wrong way absolutely does he need to like calm down a little bit and, and maybe look at the bigger picture at times for sure but he definitely has the talent maybe not as much as what Brett Griffin thinks that he does I don't think he's a future cup champion but I think he's certainly a formidable race car driver and a guy that deserves to be here because he does have the talent to win. We've seen that happen. He has five truck series wins. He has three wins in the Xfinity series. He deserves to be in this series or at least one of the three national touring series. So to see him have to go sit on the sideline would be a shame. And I see people being like, oh, the sponsorship model is broken. This is unfair. And listen, it's been like this for a while. And ultimately, when all the, you know, uh, musical chairs, when the music stopped, there's just not a chair left for Chandler Smith at the moment. 
you know, at least in a competitive ride. I would imagine that we might see him bounce around next year if he doesn't have anything full time. But ultimately, Chandler Smith with being without a ride would certainly be a storyline heading into 2025. Because like I said, I think he's a dude that can certainly win an Xfinity Series championship and could do it this year, which would be crazy to see him not have anything set for 2025. All right, getting into what happened on Saturday at Homestead. Real quick overview. The Truck Series. Grant Enfinger goes back to back, stretches his fuel mileage, stretches his tires, ends up winning at Homestead after he had just won at Talladega. His two wins in this round of eight for the Truck Series gives him the pit stall selection at Phoenix for that championship race because, well, he has two wins in this round and nobody can best that. So for Grant, that is massive for him in that number nine, nine team. Corey Heim had the fastest truck all day. Got off sequence in the pit, pitted uh, with like 30 laps to go, was 31 seconds behind, and the Fox booth was like, our stack guy says that he should get there with five laps to go, which is true if he was running those same lap times that he had on fresh tires the entire run, but ultimately that wasn't going to happen, and Michael Waltrip even pointed that out, which I wish their stack guy would have taken into account because Corey Heim never even got close. With seven to go, he was 17 seconds off the lead, ends up finishing in fourth, 17 seconds off the lead behind Grant Enfinger. Uh, just a day that didn't work out strategy-wise for him, but for Grant, massive win for he and that CR7 team, and they head into Martin Martinsville now, another track where Grant is going to be really good at, and then heading into Phoenix, this could be Grant Infinger's championship. I'm not 100% sure if that's, you know, going to happen yet or not, but they have certainly hit their stride at the right time, like Ryan Blaney in 2023 in the Cup Series. You had Ty Majeski come home uh, second, Connor Mozak fourth, Corey Heim fourth, Tyler Ankrum in fifth, uh, Stuart Fries in sixth, and Daniel Dye in seventh. A really good day um, for some of our drivers in the point series. Nick Sanchez was running second and then runs out of fuel on the last lap and ends up coming home 13th. Not ideal for him. For the truck series, headed to Martinsville next weekend for the penultimate race of the season. And of course, the cutoff for the round of eight. Right now, you have Corey Heim sitting technically second in points at 49 over the cutoff line. Christian Eck is 38 over the cutoff line and Ty Majeski 22 over the cutoff line. Raja Carruth currently sitting P5 in the points, 22 points below. So he's going to need to score stage points and have a really good run at Martinsville. But Ty Majeski, really good short track driver at that. Taylor Gray is 24 points below. Tyler Ankrum, Nick Sanchez, both 41 points below the cutoff line. They are in must-win positions. Switching over to the Xfinity Series race, because it was a double header on Saturday at Homestead, you have Austin Hill picking up the win um, and locking himself into that championship race. We now have AJ Allmendinger and Austin Hill locked into the championship race at Phoenix. For Austin Hill, if you watch practice and qualifying on Friday, he practiced the entire session, all 15 minutes he had, just running the bottom, running the bottom, running the bottom. And guess what he did in the race? Ran the bottom and absolutely put on a show. He went on to lead 82 laps in route to victory. He and Cole Custer were clearly the best cars all day day. Uh, Austin ends up getting around Cole in the closing laps of that race, uh, just on a little bit better tires, goes on to win, locks himself into Phoenix. Like I said, there was nothing really major that happened during this race. It was a pretty natural race, which I have no complaints about whatsoever. Homestead is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, there were multiple times where we had groups of four, five, six cars, all racing different lanes, all racing for position. So much fun. Homestead continues to deliver and remains one of the best tracks on the NASCAR schedule. And I think everybody would Wishes the championship race would go back, but we'll have to wait and see if that happens in the future, maybe 2026, who knows. But we currently have Austin Hill, AJ Allmendinger locked into that championship race at Phoenix. Those other two spots currently occupied by Justin Allgaier and Cole Custer. Allgaier is plus 35 over the cutoff. Cole Custer is plus 28. Chandler Smith currently sits P5 in points. He is minus 28 below the cutoff line. Then you have Jesse Love at minus 35. Sam Mayer and Sammy Smith, minus 47 for Sam Mayer, minus 95 for Sammy Smith. Both of those guys are in must-win positions as we head to Phoenix, or Martinsville next weekend. Sorry, my apologies for that one. So let me know in the comments what you thought about uh, the Connor Jones situation, the NBC Sports app. <laughs> Um, uh, Chandler Smith and him potentially not being in NASCAR next year, as well as what happened on Saturday at Phoenix. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.